Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this evening lecture. Uh, my name is Michiko Ono from Japan, and um, I'm not quite familiar with the <coughs> format of this uh, lecture and seminar kind of thing, but uh, I've been uh, asked to give some talk about um, the future of the cities and infrastructure development. And is this, uh, is my speaking okay? And um, acoustically, okay, thank you very much. Well, um, uh, at, at the beginning, um, I'd like to introduce myself. And uh, uh, I'm now a freelance consultant in the area of smart cities based in Tokyo, Japan. And before I started my consultancy business, I used to work for Hitachi Limited, Hitachi, Compania Hitachi, for more than 40 years. And during the first 20 years, I was in the uh, manufacturing research laboratory and um, uh, I've been, I was working on the um, automation technology, production automation technologies like um, uh, industrial robots and uh, other uh, assembly automation. Then I moved to the uh, company's uh, internet internal information system where uh, I uh, was responsible for the, the, the development and operation of internal systems like business applications, human resource system, accounting system, and um, uh, sales and procurement system of the company, as well as the uh, network infrastructure of the entire Hitachi group. And then I moved to strategic planning division where I was responsible for the development of um, <coughs> new uh, business areas. So actually during my 40 years, I've been in charge of all the internal things, internal technology for the manufacturing of products and the um, factories of the company and the internal information system. And then uh, uh, at the la during the last six, seven years with Hitachi, I was in the uh, smart city product uh, pro uh, project, smart city project division, where I built up a uh, human network uh, with the um, uh, global, leaders in the, the smart city area. Then I started my own business. So <clears throat> today's subject is the future of cities and infrastructure development. And my talk will be in this content. Like, at first, I will talk about um, different backgrounds and the models of smart cities by regions. So, how the, uh, how the uh, smart cities were developed. Then an example of smart cities, and then um, the change of models. And um, uh, this, this, this part is not uh, exactly the, uh, correct because I uh, made um, another presentation in Korea three days ago, so the, this is the, uh, the uh, list of contents for Korean presentation that, as you can find in the item four. But uh, I, uh, my lecture this evening does not include this one. So, um, talking about the, the uh, urban development, uh, it is necessary, it, it is always talked about the, the uh, urbanization, global trends in urbanization. As you can see here, um, urban population of the world exceeded the rural population in 2007, which 
uh, is um, uh, indicated at the cross point of the green line and the red line. And uh, in 2050, the uh, United Nations uh, predict, predicts that the, the uh, urban population will reach 70% of total population in the world. And uh, the, the growth of the uh, uh, urban population is very rapid, and um, uh, while the rural population uh, has hit the peak already and uh, will decline, although the uh, total population of the, globe, uh, the entire world will increase. And if you look at Russian case, uh, urban and rural population of Russian Federation, uh, according to the United Nations World Urbanization Prospect 2018, which was recently published, uh, Rus uh, urban population of Russia uh, exceeded rural population in 1957 uh, so Russia is 50 years ahead of the world in terms of urbanization of population. Now, uh, I don't know how this uh, affect the, the urban development uh, in Russia uh, in comparison with the, the global uh, trend. Now, uh, this is my own analogies of um, the uh, growth of population and pressure onto the cities. When you look at uh, the, the situation of England in late 19th century to early 20th centuries, when the, uh, the population uh, rapidly grew in, the, in London, as indicated on the right hand side, uh, left hand side graph, green graph uh, with uh, yellow line. And um, the, because of this um, rapid growth of population in city, the, um, the hygienic situation of the city deteriorated and the rampancy of the smallpox uh, spread. And um, uh, this is, this uh, pressurized this way of being for cities as external pressure. And internal pressure it is the, the uh, increase of the population itself. And uh, because of these internal and external pressures, there had been a quest for new ways of being for cities at the turn of the century from 19th to 20th. And at that time, there are many proposals uh, were um, suggested, like uh, urban, plan uh, urban planning uh, started at this age and also uh, the garden, garden city was uh, proposed by an English uh, architect or uh, urban planner, and um, uh, contemporary city was proposed by a French architect, and there are utopians who really developed uh, their uh, new cities in their uh, land, which was owned by wealthy people. But after several, um, several uh, decades, some ideas had uh, been outed and uh, uh, forgotten. And I think this, on the global stage, uh, the on the right-hand side of this slide shows that um, the, the situation of the uh, increase of the urban population, in, particularly in the emerging uh, economies like um, Asia 
in the, uh, Latin America and Africa uh, is growing, just like the growth of the population in London in the last uh, 19th century. And also, there's um, uh, another pressure, which is the global consensus towards low carbon society to uh, protect the globe from the, the uh, climate change. And these two internal and external pressures uh, pressed the city to find a new way of being. And recently, there, are, there have been many new ideas of smart cities or eco cities or green cities. And we are now in the process that um, which one will survive and um, which one will be uh, forgotten in the future. So um, this is, um, while there are many um, ideas and many proposals for the future of the cities, only one thing which is common among these people uh, telling the ideas and the proposals is that uh, the, during the 21st century, particularly the, the first half of the 21st century, the way of being for cities will change. And so we are now at the gate of the changing world of the uh, city and the, uh, we will change the way of uh, development of the cities. As, an, uh, as a consultant of smart cities, uh, I'd like to uh, point out uh, one approach to the future of the city development with, uh, from the, the perspective of smart cities. And as you can um, imagine that um, the people started using the word smart city in around 2007, about 11 years ago. And uh, the definition and the meaning of the smart city have been changing since then. And there is no single definition of smart cities which is generally accepted. Everybody, uh, think or everybody understands smart city in different ways. However, there is an obvious trend of understanding smart cities from technology-based cities to the quality of life of the people is important. And this is a, uh, the general trend of smart cities uh, particularly the understanding of the smart cities. So I will now just um, review the changing images of um, smart cities. During the first period uh, between 2008 and 2011, uh, first hype or first boom of smart city came. At that time, there were two extreme models. One is networked city, which was mainly uh, advocated by ICT industry, uh, saying that networking of urban infrastructure will create new value. And the other extreme model is energy efficient city, based on the environmental um, approaches of the urban development, uh, to um, tackle with the climate change or global warming. So the, uh, the energy efficient cities to use the renewable energy sources like um, uh, solar energy or wind turbine, wind energy and other renewable energies and as well as the energy management systems. And then the period of disappointment came afterward. And it was about 2012 to 2015. 
and um, uh, the network city, which was uh, advocated by ICT industry, uh, was uh, seen as networking without purposes does not create any new value. So among the city officials, the mis uh, mistrust on the concept um, proposed by ICT industry happened. And so uh, many city officials say that um, the, the ICT-oriented smart city is very expensive, but no return on investment. At the same time, the energy efficiency city uh, is, has uh, reached some kind of um, uh, deadlock. And um, uh, at the beginning, uh, the, the energy management system, which is shown on the uh, left-hand side at the bottom, uh, is expected to create new industry of energy management services. And uh, it, in Japan, the Japanese government supported this kind of a development of energy management system for cities, for houses, uh, for buildings, and to, with the uh, expectation that this will create a new industry, uh, of new service industry in between the supplier of energy, which is um, electricity companies and consumer of energy. But actually, uh, the industry found that um, it is difficult to find viable business models of energy management services because the consumers wouldn't pay additional fee on the uh, energy on the energy bill uh, for the uh, additional services and many additional services were pro uh, proposed but this was from the suppliers aspect or supplier's perspective, and that was not um, demanded by the consumers. So they didn't want to pay any additional pay, uh, fee for the additional services. So uh, the, the expectation that the, uh, there will be a new service industry has uh, gone away. And also, in the, some uh, residential area where the home energy management systems were installed, um, actually, during the first one or two years, the consumption of energy dropped 10 to 15 percent just by using the home energy management system, which tells the consumer to save energy and um, how uh, the energy is consumed or electricity is used at home uh, by telling the, the consumption curve of the, your own uh, electricity at the, the uh, tablet type of um, terminals. But after two years, the, uh, all the waste of energy has gone and uh, the energy saving has uh, reached the saturation and the people were uh, tired of uh, the, their effort of um, energy saving and um, they felt that they are chased by the system or they are pushed by the system to uh, save the energy. So <clears throat> this time, uh, during this period, um, the, I call this is um, the time of disappointment. Now, uh, since around uh, 2014, uh, new it's a resurgence or revival of um, uh, smart cities, particularly in the United States and in Europe. 
And um, uh, the new approaches for the smart cities is not the technological approaches, but uh, the, the, as I, I, you can see in the right-hand side, in the green area of the slide, the, the smart city is uh, regarded as the solutions to real problems of the cities. And, and also, uh, the, at the beginning uh, of the first hike, first boom, the central government uh, played a very important role of leading the projects of uh, smart cities in, in the States, in, the, in Japan, in Europe, in China, but, and also the uh, industry led uh, the uh, proposals and that advocate the con new concept of smart cities, but uh, now, as you can find on the lower uh, part of the uh, right-hand side, finding of the roles of the municipality or cities when the citizen and the industry has changed. So they have found new roles in the development of smart cities in different ways, which I will tell um, afterwards. And also, uh, the new in, as new enablers, new technologies like IoT, in, uh, in Internet of Things, and um, open data has uh, came to uh, support the, the development of a new uh, types of um, uh, smart cities. And, and, and also, uh, the cities are regarded as um, one of the very big system, rather than treating the individual um, infrastructure like energy, transportation, and water, uh, but one big system of systems. So, and to summarize this change of the uh, understanding, during the first stage, I would summarize that technologies led the concept and the project of smart cities. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, lead players were technology industry and industrial advocate and central governments. Now the uh, concept or understanding of the smart cities have changed into the, the, that the um, challenges to be solved come first. So challenge is the, the first thing, or problems with the first finding, and come first, and technology enable and enhance the solution, how to solve the problems. And lead players now are municipalities or cities and residents community and startups, rather than big industry. Now, I will show four examples of smart cities from Japan, China, and the United States. The two examples in, from Japan and China belongs to a kind of old model. And uh, new, uh, two examples from the United States are kind of a new model. And the first one, Kita Kyushu City, which is a part, uh, southern part, which is located in southern Japan. And this city was granted um, the uh, funding from Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry in the project called Next Generation Energy and Social Systems Demonstration. And in this project, the, the price of the electricity was dynamically changed depending on the consumption of the energy. And the experiment here is to see how the consumers or residents behave uh, against the change, dynamic change of the prices of the electricity. And so there have been uh, very uh, advanced technologies are in, uh, introduced and um, uh, city energy management system uh, on the, the city was developed, which is shown on the left-hand side of the slide. And 
um, examples of the screens of um, city energy management systems are shown on the right hand side of the screen and the, the experiment or demonstration uh, com was completed with a lot of very valuable data. Uh, just by changing the, the, um, the uh, patterns of changing dynamic pricing, how the, uh, the people uh, engaged in this project obtained a lot of real data from the, the consumers, how they behave. Uh, the, the use of electricity. But as I mentioned earlier, after this demonstration project is completed or finished, there's no new uh, services uh, uh, developed in this area. At the beginning, the, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry expected that after Following this demonstration project, there will be a new uh, industry developed in this area based on the um, energy management services. But um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the consumers in this area wouldn't pay any additional fee for this um, uh, management services. So once the grant from the, the government finishes, everything is stopped. So this is the, the uh, old, one of the old model of the uh, smart city in uh, the area of energy management. And this, the second one is the uh, Tianjin Eco City, which is very famous in, um, and uh, this is um, the joint project between Chinese and Singaporean government. And um, they developed a very big new city on the, the um, landfill coastal area. So there have been no people living there. And in the case of the previous one in Kita Kyushu, there, there was already a city in, uh, in the area and a new uh, energy management system was introduced in the existing city. But in this case, the, the, the new city was developed from the scratch. And um, uh, as the name EcoCity indicates, uh, the energy management system was also in, in, uh, introduced and very much um, <coughs> uh, development was um, completed after several years. But this is um, regarded as um, kind of um, uh, very uh, typical uh, old type uh, smart city because there's no uh, resident uh, when the, the city was completed. And so uh, there's no, nothing to uh, answer to the, the demand from the consumers or demand from the residents. And so uh, this is kind of an old type which is um, uh, programmed by the, the central government. Now, <clears throat> I'll go to the new model. Uh, this is a Portland, Oregon in the United States. Portland is known as the city to attract young people. And um, uh, the purpose of the uh, city development of Portland is to make the city to attract young creative people. And uh, the, the concept of the development is city of human size. And so, uh, as you can see in the uh, pictures here, that they uh, try to uh, make the street as uh, the place to people stay and meet other people and and street as i indicated on the right hand side street and the town designed to make people work and meet each other and even the trams on the uh, the bottom uh, picture show that the um, trams uh, run very close to the people sitting and um, uh, people can see each other 
And uh, this is very important to make uh, innovation or a crea creative uh, city because um, the innovation or create creation of uh, creative of uh, new business or new startups, it, it is very important to mix the people together, uh, mix the people of different background, different types of people together. So Portland is doing this by the city design of the street designs. And another example of this uh, re recent understanding of the smart city is Columbus, Ohio, also in, from the United States. This city, Columbus, is a winner of the US Department of Transportation's Smart City Challenge. This Smart City Challenge is a kind of a competition among the US cities to solve the problems of specific to the city with transportation as a tool. So in the case of um, Ohio, uh, Columbus City, the challenge or problems to be solved are, there are two uh, problems they picked up. One is a higher infant mortality in a specific county. So infant mortality is the death rate of, of the child under five years. So the, um, the average of infant mortality was higher in the specific area of the city than the average. And also there are some racial health disparity in the city. So the uh, key for this competition is to use transportation to solve the problem. And because this is the, the competition run by the, the US Department of Transportation. So uh, this is not just uh, introduce trams in the city or just uh, introduce the bus location systems for the bus lines or bus stops, but how to increase, improve the, uh, the infant mortality uh, score to up higher um, to, to reach the average. And so they try to improve the access to prenatal care, which means that um, they extended the public transportation uh, network to the, the area where the infant mortality is higher because um, uh, they didn't have, the, the people there didn't have uh, any access to the, uh, the hospital, even if they have troubles with, uh, in the uh, pregnant uh, situation. And also these people were uh, not uh, affordable to, uh, for the uh, cell phone or smartphones or uh, tablets kind of things. And uh, so they can't use um, these um, um, advanced transportations and <clears throat> without any um, money. So the city distributed a kind of IC card to be used for the payment of the uh, public transportation without um, <clears throat> bothering about the payment. So uh, this is a kind of um, uh, welfare um, improvement using the transportation as a tool. And um, uh, this kind of approaches, so in this case, the infrastructure is limited to transportation, but um, you can find how the infrastructure is used to solve the uh, problem which is specific to the city. So this is a new approach to the smart city. And also the, play, the change of the roles of the players is very important uh, for the, the future of the city development. And uh, public-private partnership, uh, PPP, has been talked about for many years. But uh, in all, uh, in all this, uh, this uh, definition, uh, PPP was um, 
just the sharing of expense between industry and the municipality. In, in this uh, formula, um, industry was proactive and um, uh, giving, offering the proposal and the pushing of proprietary integrated system of the vendor to the municipality and the municipality or cities are kind of reactive uh, of receiving the proposal from the vendors and uh, um, expecting grants from the central government and bring this uh, grant to the uh, PPP uh, sharing of the expenses. But now four players are very key to establish the smart cities. These new types of the uh, PPP, uh, public-private uh, partnership, includes not only uh, industry and the municipality, but uh, universities and uh, people living there. So public-private, pu public means maybe municipality and also university included in the public. And private includes private industry and uh, people uh, living there. And these four uh, players have different roles. And as I mentioned earlier, in this new understanding of smart cities, the problems to be solved it comes first. And the um, bottom right, green area, residents, community, or people living there, the city, identify the problems and, and also calls for the solution from the uh, people living there. So this is a kind of grassroots activities. This is the start point of a smart city. And once the uh, problems are identified, then uh, municipality will uh, lead the solutions and uh, industry respond to this requirement to provide local government with technologies, vi technological vision and, and also uh, experiences with other cities. So not pushing their own technology, but advise the cities with their uh, expertise and of course, uh, this is a business, so they will um, expect that their solutions are purchased, but um, the standpoint is very much uh, equal to municipality and people and university. And the roles of the universities are uh, you know, three <coughs> ways. One is that um, uh, the carry out research of the new technologies with the, the cities, using the city as the, the test bed or the fields of research. And also the, the use, the smart city project as uh, the capacity building or educational purposes. So the uh, students are engaged in the project to complete their master's uh, project. And also, uh, university is a neutral position between municipality and the people and municipality and the industry. So uh, when the, uh, the project needs a new uh, system installed in the uh, cities or in the community, then when the new ro rules are necessary, then university come here with the ex expertise of legal knowledge and also the, the position of a neutrality. Uh, this is the, the new role of the university in, uh, in the, the development of an, um, smart cities in the uh, recent cases. And also, the, as I mentioned earlier, the ICT 
In the first place, and in early days of the uh, smart city boom, the ICT, major ICT companies were the lead leaders, but now the, uh, the applications used in the, the solution of the smart cities are mainly developed by ICT uh, startups rather than um, the uh, major uh, ICT companies because the startup companies are agile and so they can move faster than the major, big companies. And so municipalities tend to rely on these startups and I understand this um, uh, seminar, entire seminar of this um, uh, Ostrov is to encourage uh, people to uh, establish new venture businesses and um, new entrepreneurship uh, um, in this area on the, uh, around uh, all through the uh, Russian. And um, uh, this is a very important aspect that um, in the United States, in Europe, that um, ICT startups uh, plays a very important role in the urban development and, and also the uh, infrastructure development. Now, uh, the, uh, solving the problems of um, cities is the core of this uh, smart cities, as I mentioned, and there are three ways to solve the uh, urban issues. The first is the solution by policies. This is uh, led by municipality or city office, lo or local government, I should say. And uh, the, the second way is to change the lifestyle, uh, which is led by uh, residents. The people living there changes the, uh, solve the solution by changing their own lifestyle. And the final approach is, is just technology, uh, which is led by industry. So uh, in old days, technology came first, but um, uh, now people understand that these three uh, approaches are uh, all parallel. And, um, uh, but still there are some challenges among the, each of these um, approaches. And um, in the case of um, uh, policies, uh, there are, in many cases, the municipality or local government have si di silos which are dif divided into the function of the department of the uh, municipality office. And it is necessary to break down these silos. And in the case of a lifestyle, change of lifestyle, it is uh, important to uh, be accepted by the people and um, people participation. And it is not, it shouldn't push the people to endure the uh, unpleasant condition or uncomfortable condition to save energy or uh, other things which is regarded as smart by other people. So uh, this is important that all the people feel comfortable in taking part in the smart city project. And now uh, industry has to find a new business model to, for the, the long payout time. And now industry is now um, starting understanding this. And how urban solutions are uh, integrated as uh, this is um, in a kind of um, uh, pyramid, which is how the uh, stable and or vol volatile uh, these aspects of the uh, cities are. And it, uh, as the, an arrow at, on the right, uh, left hand side indicate, the lower the, the volatility is lower because it, it, this means that it is difficult to change. So like life change, uh, it is difficult, to, it is most difficult to change lifestyles of the people. 
And then uh, the uh, less difficult, but still difficult to change the, the practices of the governance. And then uh, you can change rules and regulation. And now it, when it comes to more technological aspects like infrastructure itself and technology itself, it is very changeable. So you, when you uh, think of the project or you th when you think of um, urban development over the future, you need to consider these layers and in which layer we find the, the problems and from which layer we should solve these problems. Now, uh, the, the general trend in uh, urban development, um, as uh, I return to the, the subject of this lecture, the future of cities and infrastructure development. And this, from here, I will come into the kind of um, Russian um, trend and um, uh, global trend. And uh, now the, the, the overall trend in urban development, urban planning is, I, I should um, make the title from mixed use to multiple use. And so for, before the mixed use, there was a, a zoning aspect zoning uh, approach of the urban design. And as a, you can see <clears throat> at the top picture in the slide, um, you can, the, the letters are very uh, small, but um, the blue one it is, you can find that business zone, and green one is called uh, parks, and the uh, red one, you can read uh, residential and the um, commercial, residential and um, educational zone, and no economic zone, economic zone, and um, uh, yellow is special like economic zone. So. You, this, this is a kind of traditional or conventional way of urban planning. You zone this area as residential. People live here and this is business area. So people move from the residential area to business area every day, uh, commuting. But now uh, the new, um, model is mixed use, then uh, in, the, in the same neighborhood or the same region, uh, there are residential and um, uh, business and commercial or hospital all together. And so you have um, high-rise building and the, the lower part of the high-rise building is um, shops, and so commercial area. Then you have office floors in the middle, and upper part of the building is the uh, residential or um, condominium uh, where the people live. And so uh, in this um, combination of the residential and business and commercial in the same area, people working here, there and living there or studying there, you, you could have uh, universities or schools in the same area. You can have um, the, uh, you can meet different people just for going out for lunch and um, visiting other people uh, on the business meeting kind of thing. Then uh, this is um, uh, a kind of, it is called as an ecosystem to uh, produce 
the creativity, creative activities, and, uh, and innovation. And just like in the case of um, Portland, Oregon, in the United States, they try to make the street to meet, uh, meet the people. And these mixed-use uh, approaches are uh, being uh, applied in the uh, urban development or city development in Japan and in many U.S. cities. And um, uh, to make, there are two different um, effects of this type of uh, structure. One is that um, you can uh, make uh, the people meet together and um, uh, opportunities for create new things, new businesses or uh, new innovation kind of thing. And also, uh, the, you, the people who are living work in the same area, you don't have to travel much. So uh, for the uh, environmental aspect, or for uh, the um, energy saving aspect, and also the, the um, solving the traffic jam or traffic problems, then uh, this structure of mixed use is very, uh, has a very good result of um, solving these uh, problems together. And uh, this is the current situation. And not from now on, in the near future, uh, this mixed-use zone will be uh, uh, converted into the multiple use, uh, which is now starting in Japan. Because, in, as you may, uh, may be quite familiar that uh, the, the population of Japan is already decreasing and um, the, uh, the uh, old people are increasing. So uh, the a aging of the population is a very difficult uh, problem in Japan. And so once these people, in our experience in Japan, we tend to live outside of the cities. So uh, the, the middle of the city were, were the business and commercial area, and the surrounding suburban area was a residential area. But when people get old, it, was, it becomes difficult for the people to travel go into the city. And now, uh, uh, in many cities, the <coughs> The, the central part of the cities are rebuilt to uh, accommodate old people uh, again. Um, then the, these old people uh, are, don't need to uh, travel a long time to, for shopping. And kind, so uh, they can just, you know, uh, do shopping in the neighborhood. But the school, you, you will, uh, the, the uh, population of children is decreasing. So the age structure of the city is changing. And so now the uh, elementary schools are built so that they can be modified into the the home of elderly. So once you lose the, the school kids, then the school buildings are used for the elderly people. So that is called multiple use. So um, <clears throat> based on the change of the, the people or based on the change of the um, ratio of the age groups, young people, less young people, more old people. So the, this uh, proportion changes. And uh, to follow this change, the function of the buildings or function of the city changes. This is uh, called multiple use. This is uh, the future um, 
phase of the city development. As I mentioned, uh, write down in the, the green box that the buildings and the facilities in cities changes their function to follow the change of lifestyle of the residents. So uh, this, this is um, the general trend doesn't change. Can you go to the next? Okay. So, I'm not criticizing you, but um, because um, uh, I've been um, uh, talking with um, many uh, urban development people in Russia and, um, and also um, smart city related uh, visionaries of Russia. And uh, uh, even in today, the, the planning, city planning in Russia uh, seems to be a functional zoning, very much uh, traditional, and also uh, single function cities are very common. And this created uh, Russian specific problems of monogorod. But uh, I, I understand that the, the many people are uh, tackling this problem of Monogorod. But uh, when I talked, uh, I remember my experience of just, just several months ago, uh, when I talked about the, the mixed use approach is now the, the global trend uh, to one of the uh, city leaders in Russia. Uh, and he replied, this is mixed, about mixed use. This is because Japan has small land. So, but Russia has wide run land and spread much land. So you don't have to mix the function. You can have separate functions of the city. But I'm not talking about the, the the use of land in, in terms of the, the area, how much area you can use, but I'm talking about how you can bring people together to meet people, <clears throat> each other, to create new ideas. So this is um, um, the, my impression that the people who are attending this uh, Ostrov workshop is very much, you know, um, future mind, future looking minded. So uh, <clears throat> this this slide may look like um, a, a kind of um, um, funny or, um, but. Uh, my experience with um, some established people in Russia tell that um, the, uh, some um, traditional or conventional way of thinking in the uh, city planning still exists. Um, so mixed use and multiple use are essential for the liveliness and the creativity of the city, regardless of the size of the land available. So this is uh, something that um, uh, from now on, uh, and it, it is, um, regard, it should be regarded as a part, uh, point of the uh, future of the city in the in Russian Federation. And <clears throat> so, uh, it is very important that what is smart city would mean that um, it is, uh, as I mentioned, that um, the city 
to find the problems and cities which is capable of uh, solving the, the problem together with uh, the people living there. And, but um, in most cases, how the, the, the ultimate uh, objective of urban development or ultimate objective of smart city is to make attractive city for the people who are living here today or who would like to come into the city. So make uh, the city attractive is very uh, important and, and also it is um, uh, crucial for the city to attract creative young people. Otherwise, just like Japan, the um, city population is aging and you will have less young people. That's the problem. And uh, in uh, the, there's common understanding, uh, like the theory of uh, Richard Florida, which, who is the, the university professor of Toronto and um, the leader of uh, uh, the theory of uh, creative cities. The probability of creating innovation is pro proportional to the density of people of variety meeting one another. So as, I as I've been telling you that the meeting the people of different backgrounds, different types is very important. And uh, urban design to make people meet and talk to others are very important, uh, just like in Portland. But isolation of a university is a bad decision because you don't make the people, students, meet business people. So I've been, I have many uh, Russian friends in universities or cities, and I've been telling uh, that this, this university uh, Far East and Federal University has a very great campus, but isolated in, on this island. And this is a failure which Japan experienced 40 years ago. And uh, about 40 years ago, uh, there were many universities in the central area of Tokyo. And there was a trend to move the campus outside of the city and um, move to a um, suburban area, very green and wide, lovely campus. But still, you know, it took one and a half hours from the central Tokyo to the campus. And they found that it was difficult to uh, attract good students and also the professors and researchers had difficulty in commuting <clears throat> to the, the new campus. And now, the, there are many, most of these universities have returned to central Tokyo, building high-rise buildings. So uh, the, for the, some educational purposes in university, it is not necessary to have um, the, the w wide campus and um, uh, the, just like traditional or historical um, <clears throat> British universities like um, Oxford and Cambridge, they are, you know, just um, uh, melt down in the, in the city. So the city buildings are school buildings. And in Tokyo, uh, the, the universities are building fairly uh, tall buildings. And um, because uh, the, the students are very, a uh, number of students are large, so a uh, fairly big, big building of 20 uh, stories high. And, but uh, these buildings are built in the the central area and uh, along with the business area, business buildings and uh, uh, the 
students or university professors or researchers of students and students can meet of the, the pharmaceutical department can meet with the, the people of the pharmaceutical companies around the, the campus and that is happening and uh, so um, when uh, I meet the you know actually I, I met one of the <coughs> senior uh, one of um, uh, minister uh, of um, uh, Primorsky Cry government just before this lecture and told the same thing to him that um, you know um, but you have already moved here but in order to make Vladivostok as a city of innovation, as a city to uh, attract startups, venture businesses. You need to move back the university to the city center so you can have long-term plan of 20 years, 30 years. So uh, this campus can be regarded as a kind of evacuation campus while the central part of the city is redeveloped. After this, the central part of the city is redeveloped, then you can go back, the university can go back to the central city to be mixed up with other business area. And this campus can be used as a specific purpose of um, some laboratories which cannot be located in the city center or other um, com convention like this. And um, of course, this is just my own idea, but um, <clears throat> uh, from the perspective of the uh, creating innovation um, or the new venture business created from the university, then uh, it is necessary to put other ingredient to the university structure. And this is uh, how the, the streets have changed. Um, we, yesterday I talked with uh, some, uh, an attendant of this, uh, he may be here in this today, this evening, I don't know, but um, uh, talked about um, uh, smart road. And there are two approaches or two aspects of the smart road. One is the how to make the, the, the road traffic smooth and no traffic jam or uh, efficient tra um, stream flow over the cars using the autonomous uh, driving cars and the connected cars and the com control of the, the traffic lights. And the other <coughs> meaning of smart road is that the roads in smart city, that the road used to be a tool to bring people from one place to another and to move goods or something from one, just pass. But now you have um, mobile devices, laptop and um, uh, tablets. You can um, work, you can carry out your business anywhere as long as you have network. And so offices, in, as, I, as you can see on the top, oh, there are couple, some photos. You know, offices in the past is the enclosed rooms with office furniture. So, uh, envelope of walls. But using these mobile devices and the Wi-Fi, streets or squares and parks becomes your office. You can work. So, uh, as shown in the, the lower photo, which are from uh, Tokyo, 
all these examples are from, uh, in Tokyo. And the new development in the city center of Tokyo is to broaden the sidewalk. And so building the, the first th two or three um, stages of the building is set back and to give broad sidewalk and place benches and tables and for, so that people just sit and rest or people work on the on the street and and people can meet together so this is the new types of office and so um, the this is a kind of uh, new structure and this particular slide I used this one uh, last year in Bradgerstock during the Eastern Economic Forum last year there was a special session called City a Center of Gravity and uh, the subject of this session was to how to make brother stock uh, to the city of venture businesses. And I was invited as a panelist to talk about how to attract young creative people or uh, venture business to uh, brother stock. And uh, I sh showed this slide at that time. And of course, this is easy for a milder climate. But still, in um, Vladivostok or even in Moscow or Yakutsk, I don't know. But, you know, um, new technologies of, um, uh, of a kind of canopy of some street, not all the street of the city shouldn't be like this. So, you, you can make some part of the city which attract the people from different um, sector of the city and the businessmen, business people and uh, students and research people come together. So um, the, the canopy street is uh, always uh, are common and also you know, uh, you could have uh, underground uh, square kind of uh, structure. And so um, now the, this you know, concept that the um, street, uh, the offices are not separate, separated for, by company, but offices are the overlaid to the street and the, the office of different uh, organizations are also overlaid in this area. And there are many uh, attempts to make street to square or, and the top one uh, is Osaka, Japan. And as I, you, you can see in the uh, left hand side, uh, this is a um, pooling of taxis and streets in front of the railway station building and it was closed for pedestrian and you can see the uh, central and right hand side right hand side photo is in in the evening and you can you know uh, have um, uh, cafe and um, uh, small shops or kiosks and um, for pedestrian uh, entirely for um, the, the, the cars are uh, uh, rerouted to other area and uh, they uh, checked the, the traffic jam and um, uh, after this was made for pedestrian, actual uh, traffic flow was better than before and so uh, it, uh, it was found that the use of the, the road was very bad at the, uh, before it was turned into the pedestrian deck. 
And uh, the, the middle one is very famous, Times Square in New York. And um, uh, more than 10 years ago, it was just a um, street with the many cars. And, but now it is a um, uh, pedestrian um, square. Times Square is rarely square. Uh, before then, uh, Times Square is just a street, not square. So, and also uh, in, in Paris, the, uh, along the Seine River, uh, the, the left-hand side uh, picture shows the uh, bypass uh, along the river. And there are many bridges over the river. So the original road uh, on the bridge level uh, was uh, congested because uh, many uh, crossing of the bridges, bridgeway and um, uh, riverside way. So the city developed a new way for the new street, expressway under the bridge. So this, this made the, the traffic better than before, but now uh, the, uh, the people in Paris would like to have um, uh, more place for people. And just as the, the uh, central picture of the <coughs> bottom photo so that um, the street, they don't rebuild the street, but just they put some sand uh, on the street and make it um, uh, like seashore. And, um, and also uh, all the, the cars were stopped. And so people can uh, picnic uh, on the, the, by the river. And this took more than 15 years. At first, uh, they stopped car traffic just on Sunday and placed chairs and carried out this experiment. And then gradually they extended the period um, the, and finally they completely changed the structure uh, of, um, change, not change the structure, but the, the that changed the, the way of use of the uh, road. And um, um, not much uh, budget was used because the, the original road remained like this. And so there's no uh, expensive reconstruction work was made. And but just by using uh, the, the original infrastructure and um, just adding something new, like sun and um, uh, chairs, parasol, and um, uh, maybe some uh, kiosk type of shops. Then, um, and gradually change. This is very important uh, to, uh, for the, the the future of the city development and infrastructure development, which is the subject of my lecture, that um, that the um, favorite things of the people changes, and lifestyle lifestyle of the people change slowly, but the as I showed in the. Uh, one of the previous slides here. Lifestyle, it is difficult to change the lifestyle from your side, but the, the history said that uh, at the, the, uh, the environment changed, or so technology changed, so the, uh, civilization changed, so lifestyle slowly changes. And the, lifestyle changes, then the other upper layer changes more easily. So this, this, these are the exam, examples that um, 
to follow the change of the lifestyle, the infrastructure and the city structure changes to follow the change of the lifestyle of the people. Now, um, the, I have been talking about the, the future of the cities and a little bit of infrastructure. Now, uh, the infrastructure, the um, so far, the city planners and um, uh, people who talk about um, smart cities or eco cities uh, mainly talk about um, the infrastructure separately, uh, energy infrastructure, telecommunication infrastructure, and water infrastructure, transportation, but. Now, the entire city is a, a system of system. All these individual infrastructures are linked together. So, um, to view the city as a holistic system is very important. And so, the recent uh, key words, uh, just small, but um, uh, on the right-hand side uh, of the slide, I showed a couple of examples of um, recent expression of the, the city, is that um, city anatomy was city metabolism, city as ecosystems. So city anatomy and city metabolism imply that um, to see the city just like human body. So um, it's an organic uh, combination or structure uh, and uh, everything like um, uh, information, people and um, uh, goods and money comes in and goes out. Uh, just like a metabolism of the human body or organic uh, structure. So this, this approach of holistic view is very important in the, in the thinking of infrastructure from now on. And so as you can see uh, in this simple diagram, the important thing is that um, now the urban infrastructure has been networked and so the one incident to one infrastructure one in, on one uh, location could influence very much into the different uh, models of the different uh, uh, models of uh, infrastructure as well as um, the, the uh, influence of the area is, becomes very broad. And so uh, to cope with this, this uh, interaction of, um, among the infrastructure, the people who are engaged in the infrastructure, like local government operators and administrators or developers and suppliers, financiers and people who are using the infrastructure, all engaged in this uh, incidents. And so the communication platform is very important and also how to uh, predict the, uh, the, um, the uh, influence of one incident uh, propagate in the uh, entire network of the uh, infrastructure system. These are the uh, one <coughs> model that, which is now, uh, I'm uh, in, engaged in um, uh, international uh, organization for standardization and um, we are developing the, um, the description model of urban uh, cities in the uh, global standardization organization and this is one model and the previous and this is also another model of the uh, to uh, of, uh, to describe the city in the uh, global standardization discussion 
So uh, this is the final uh, slide of my uh, lecture. And um, uh, the, the message here to the participants of um, Ostrov is that um, you are aiming at the, the create new value uh, in, and the maybe create new project. And uh, the, from the uh, point of view of uh, city development or future cities and um, uh, infrastructure development, the, the holistic view and um, the city as an, uh, and one big ecosystem is important and also you uh, need to uh, talk, think of creating the innovation by, through the, the through making people meet together and talk to each other. So I will finish my lecture here and um, uh, if you have any comments, questions or discussions, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Господин Ильич. Можно по-русски, да, вопрос задавать? Да. Скажите, есть такое определение... Есть такое определение умного города Data Driving City. Город, который управляется на основе данных. Как вы относитесь к такому определению умного города? Насколько это действительно важно? Yes. Um, data Driven City is one aspect of Smart City and which is uh, very important because um, data driven means that um, the, uh, the uh, phenomenon is um, uh, observed as data. And so um, recent, in the recent discussion in, with the cities uh, in Europe and in, in the United States, uh, the, the, the uh, role of the city uh, is to aggregate data and make it open data for the, uh, for the people living there. And so uh, data should not be monopolized or closed with the, uh, the municipality or local government. Making open data is very important to uh, uh, create new ideas. So data-driven itself is uh, some kind of um, uh, way of management of this, the city, but not only the management of the city is important, but um, if you have uh, data, then um, you could, you should, the city should make it open to the people to uh, stimulate new ideas for the improvement of the city. And so in that case, uh, the, the data-driven uh, city is important. And um, uh, the data and the big data, big data and the data analytics is one of the driver for the new aspect. But um, it is important to understand that data itself is not the purpose, it's the driver of the uh, improvement of the city. Is that, do I answer to the question? Michi Kochna. Спасибо. Mr. Michi Kochna. I'm here. Here. Thank you for your lecture. Okay. Yes, my name is Ivan Stepanov. I am from Yakutsk city. And um, I'm a researcher of Higher School of Economics in Moscow and I focus on uh, state and municipal measures uh, of innovation development of Russian cities. And uh, 
um, uh, there are many concepts of uh, future cities. For example, you, you mentioned about smart cities and creative cities. Green, maybe some of we have green cities. Okay, and uh, in your presentation, you focused on human resources, and this is main driver of um, future cities. And I agree, agree with you. And um, in my experience, I have um, one project in our city in Yakutsk. We try to uh, create our city, uh, small, like small city near Yakutsk. And uh, we created um, movement of novators. And we tried to realize our um, innovation ideas and other initiatives and we wish new infrastructure for our life and uh, here in this um, course in this event uh, our teacher said that uh, our cities was created and developed for developing industry and this is uh, as a tool to develop industry. And this is a uh, tool from last technology development, okay? Now we have a new um, direction of development of technologies and our life. And uh, in my opinion, uh, um, <clears throat> municipal management um, in small, big cities anywhere, in other countries, including in Russia, uh, should create special program to implement innovation technologies which uh, developed by technology startups and young generation and who would like to uh, make our cities more comfortable. And do you have um, information or do you know about um, programs in other countries like uh, program which I mentioned. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> since you are uh, in higher school of economics, uh, you may be aware of uh, Elena Arena and uh, uh, a professor in uh, regional development. And uh, that's a um, different uh, story. Uh, well, um, the use of um, startups is uh, very important because um, they start, and uh, uh, in, there is a kind of um, system called SDIR, is Startup in Residence, uh, which is um, uh, started in uh, San Francisco Bay Area that um, uh, the the municipality, uh, local government has special uh, network of um, uh, startup startup companies in the area, and the municipality, local government, encourages the uh, the startups, giving the problems of the city. So. Uh, the, the applications developed by startups should be something to solve the, the problems. So the, uh, the local government lead uh, the startups by giving the problems. And, and also, this, this company is very good at uh, road traffic and this company is good at water treatment or uh, water pipeline kind of thing. So uh, different startup companies, different companies have different uh, expertise or skills. And uh, so once the, the government give these uh, the problems to be solved, uh, then they work uh, for this problem and um, propose the 
their solution. And so uh, this kind of uh, SDIR is also uh, spread to uh, the Netherlands, Europe and um, the city of Rotterdam and Eindhoven and Den Haag uh, applied this similar system of using, uh, stimulating or encouraging startups. And so um, it is, you know, you, said, you mentioned that um, uh, the, there should be a system to apply the, the technologies of startups, but um, um, if the, the technologies of startup is not focused on the <coughs> city problems, you, you can't use these technologies. So, uh, one, the, it is the, the role of the local government to make the, uh, just like um, you know uh, the competition or tender kind of thing, they need to they they should tell the people that um, they need to solve these problems, and also just like um, the data driven cities um, the, the data which is related to the problems should be open to the, the people to uh, solve the problems. And, um, the, and another example is in Kansas City in the United States. They give this data open. At the same time, uh, the, the local government provide a kind of model of uh, city functions. So uh, the, uh, the startup company can develop their new application and using the real data which is given by the, through the uh, data portal of the city and apply to the, the city model to see the, uh, if the, their application works or works well or effective or, and they can um, ensure the, the outcome of the application. That, that kind of approach is very, this is very new, but um, in the future, this will become very uh, important. Do I answer to your question? А можно я в продолжении этого вопроса? Просто не совсем понятен механизм, каким образом осуществляется поддержка этих стартапов. Вот допустим, если муниципалитет выбирает какие-то стартапы, да, он финансирует их, я правильно понимаю? No. Нет, он их they, не they don't give any funding. But, um, you know, uh, this um, uh, give the, the, it is something between tender and um, specific uh, purchase. So, uh, if the, um, <coughs> not only one uh, venture is assigned to one specific area. So there are many uh, venture companies and these, once you have a group of venture company uh, who are skilled in road traffic control kind, for example, then uh, the city will give the problems of road traffic to these companies and they develop their uh, applications separately and uh, offer the, uh, to propose to the city. And so uh, after there's some kind of competition or tender type of um, uh, procedure to f decide the, the vendor of the application. But once this uh, is um, purchased by the, uh, the municipality, 
uh, applied industry, then this company is paid. So uh, this is not funding, but um, giving the uh, problems stimulates the development of new application. And um, the, the winner of race will receive the purchase order. Это понятно. У нас система госзаказов примерно такая же, но когда мы говорим о стартапах, это определенный риск, потому что они выиграли, у них нет опыта, так как это стартап, это что-то новое, да, и возникает риск, а сработает ли этот проект, будет ли он эффективен для города? Yes, in, in the case of um, uh, STIR, uh, <coughs> The, uh, it is a part of um, uh, stimulate or, you know, uh, incubate startups. So uh, even if the, the business is small or less experienced, uh, they tend to use. And, and also at the same time, uh, small venture businesses are quicker to move. So uh, they, they build a uh, new application faster than big companies because of no uh, internal procedures. So uh, the, uh, the effect of using uh, startups is that um, uh, they get the result faster than bigger company. And um, I have been um, uh, told in, uh, by a couple of city officials that um, the procurement uh, from the start of the procurement or tender to the complete completion of the project has shortened by using startups. Спасибо. Еще один вопрос. Можно? Вы говорили о том, что очень важен симбиоз муниципалитетов и граждан, населения этого муниципалитета. Да, и вот мне хотелось бы узнать о механизмах взаимодействия с населением, каким образом оно принимает участие в управлении городом. Вот, допустим, в Японии. Это что? Это ставится проблема и какой-то опрос жителей производится, либо на постоянной основе какая-то часть жителей решает эти вопросы. То есть механизмы какие взаимодействия? Um, it depends on the, the cities. Even in Japan, different types of structure is used. And, um, and in many cases, uh, there is uh, each town has some kind of um, autonomous uh, circle, and um, uh, the there are usually there are some uh, regular meetings of um, city officials and the representative of um, the uh, autonomous uh, circle of the, the small towns. And, and also, um, there are, uh, maybe uh, it's um, Japan specific because of the, the uh, squeeze of the, uh, population and also aging of the population. So uh, the people feel uh, very uh, crisis feeling of maintaining the, the, the town itself. So um, there are some uh, and, um, community, community cafe or community um, rule type of uh, uh, facilities are built in the middle of the town where people come and go and that just chat and uh, um, the uh, city has um, uh, displayed their plan for 
new development or new anything. And so uh, they can have feedback from the, the people uh, you know, through this meeting at um, this type of um, facility. So, um, and it depends. And the, the, in the city where this kind of um, open facility is successful, then the, the, the revitalization of the city is uh, getting better. And um, if, of course, there are many cities that these facilities are not built and um, the people are very uh, conservative and uh, no communication with the city ma management. And um, in that case, nothing happened. So it depends on the, the attitude of the people rather than the, the uh, effort of the uh, city officials. So the mindset of the people is very important. Добрый вечер, господин Мичи. Спасибо вам большое за лекцию, очень ценный материал. Скажите, пожалуйста, вот как давно существуют такие мультифункциональные зоны, и можно ли уже оценить как-то экономический эффект от создания таких коллабораций? Um, on the uh, economic activities the, of the area can show how the um, evaluation and the, <coughs> the uh, change of the structure is effective or not. And so uh, there are many approaches to uh, change the city and uh, the finally the, uh, the um, the measurement is increase of population of the area and also the the, the scale of um, economic activities in the uh, the area. So um, and um, I I didn't quite get uh, your first question. How long? Uh, I do you mean that the. the um, the, когда этот тренд зародился по созданию вот таких многофункциональных зон и какое распространение это уже имеет? Okay, and the uh, multifunctional multifunctional zone is a new idea and um, uh, it has just started. And uh, the uh, mixed use uh, zone has been um, in maybe in late 1990 in, in Japan and uh, uh, 1992. So it's now 20 to 30 years now and uh, um, in many, but the, this is uh, the, uh, the you know the the concept of um, um, mixed use started in 1990 to 90 uh, turn of the century. Then the actual development is maybe since 2000, and so <clears throat> the actual development of um, mixed use area has a um, history of about um, 20 years now but not, not the, the multifunctional is a new idea. And uh, uh, actually, uh, the, the development, uh, construction of elementary school, uh, which can be used as a home for elderly started many years ago, but uh, the concept of uh, multifunctional uh, is a new one. So the, uh, it is a kind of, uh, um, you know, after afterward definition of the the trend, uh, which 
or already started in some part of the, the use of building. Yes, the, the lady. Скажите, пожалуйста, поскольку школа может рассматриваться не, не только как такое пространство, которое может быть преобразовано в дом престарелых, но и как пространство, где проектируется будущее. Отсюда у меня два вопроса. Первый вопрос. Есть ли опыт многофункционального изменения школьных пространств? И второе, поскольку вы говорили о том, что в городах будущего люди ставят проблемы, учат ли в ваших школах постановки проблем, поскольку это отдельная технология? Okay. Um, there have been uh, actual uh, school buildings built uh, to be uh, converted into different uses and in in Japan and uh, uh, also kindergarten buildings uh, changed into um, different types of um, uh, facilities for elderly and um, the and also <coughs> some apartment houses can be modified there are some new apartment houses where the the walls can be moved depending on the the age structure of of the the family who are living in the uh, this, uh, the apartment house and um, <clears throat> the the second question is that um, do you mean that um, uh, the educational tool uh, I didn't quite catch what you mean in, uh, in your question. Я хотела бы, да, я хотела бы пояснить, что uh, на самом деле существует очень немного людей, кто могут по-настоящему фиксировать проблемы. И uh, в обществе вообще-то дефицит таких людей, кто могут выделять серьезные проблемы. Вы uh, показали, что благодаря mm. пространствам общения возникает много инсайтов. Но для того, чтобы эти инсайты возникали, люди должны уметь эти инсайты выдвигать и уметь формулировать проблемы. И по поводу вашего ответа на мой первый вопрос, если можно, я хотела бы спросить, есть ли многофункциональные пространства внутри школ, подобно тому, как исследование, конструирование, проектирование, вот по разным типам деятельности или какие-то другие зоны, возникающие как образовательные пространства внутри школы? Спасибо. Um, actually, the, the first, to the first question, that um, uh, in the case uh, in Japan, uh, the, um, the department houses, department store, there's an actual example that the, the, um, the, uh, the following, the, the decrease of the population and Dep uh, the department stores uh, were uh, clo closed, and then the, the, the building itself is used um, as um, a, a con part, partly a municipality office and other of, of buildings, and then uh, some part of the uh, store was um, made into a clinic because um, there. Uh, old people increase and uh, uh, hospitals are needed. So, so that kind of a, uh, renovation and um, uh, depending on the, the change of the, uh, the, um, the, this is very common that um, the existing buildings are changed into the different use, but um, at the same time, the uh, traffic um, system changes because um, the, the, the stream of the people changes uh, because uh, once the department store is closed. So um, this is uh, not only the building issue, but um, the traffic and uh, also um, everything of the lifestyle of the people. And um, the how to uh, find out or uh, specify or identify the issue is that uh, uh, 
um, the the not all the people are aware of the problems, and um, there should be uh, some kind of um, um, visionary or the opinion leader type of people are ne needed. And um, in Japan, that this kind uh, this is a th uh, called urbanist uh, who can find the the problems uh, of the city and <clears throat> there have been uh, quite recently there have been uh, uh, established some courses for to develop, uh, educate urbanists and um, uh, they the teachers are both from the local government and also uh, universities, and as well as uh, some, you know, uh, the leaders, leaders of uh, local communities, which I mentioned earlier. And these uh, people who are experienced uh, have um, the uh, two different types. Uh, one is this kind of um, workshop uh, held in different places and also <clears throat> uh, the uh, school classroom type of ed education uh, for some uh, period, half a, half a year or something. And so this um, uh, educational system for urbanists is uh, has just started in Japan, and um, in the United States, uh, the the there is a system called uh, uh, city manager, and um, city manager itself has it his their own uh, career passes, and so uh, city manager is uh, selected uh, is um, uh, assigned by the uh, city council, not this elected like mayors, but um, and the city uh, once the city manager accomplish the the uh, re, you know, renovation of the city of a small city, then he can promote it, or he, he can find a uh, better job on the larger city. So uh, city managers step. Apps. So that that kind of uh, career path uh, is a um, tool for uh, educate uh, urbanist kind of uh, people in the United States. Okay. And so. uh, good evening. My name is Isaac Kandakov. Uh, Yakutsk City. I have a question about uh, the uh, role of universities in the building of uh, smart cities. Can you explain this role more widely? Is it just a basement for uh, startup companies or some, maybe something else? Actually, um, in the, uh, the smart city development, the university has uh, the more more important thing in the uh, in, in of a university in this uh, urban development is that um, uh, the the carry out research on development of new tech new technologies or new uh, systems for uh, city uh, management or city city itself using the city as um, the uh, the field of study or uh, life uh, laboratory, uh, you know, just so it's a uh, the uh, university and the city should work together on the uh, the project to. That city provides the city itself as the uh, living laboratory, and uh, and also uh, the university is uh, 
has neutral position between the city government and uh, people. So um, it is in the, the judging if some conflict between uh, local government and uh, uh, people living there, residents, uh, happened, the, uh, the university should play as a, a neutral uh, judge uh, of the, to uh, solve the, the conflict. That is another important role of the university. Добрый вечер. Спасибо за такую интересную лекцию. Подскажите, пожалуйста, на одном из первых слайдов вы продемонстрировали нам, что сейчас у нас есть, появились новые типы городов. Умные города, экологические города и зеленые города. Объясните, пожалуйста, разницу, потому что для меня умный город обязан быть экологическим, и экологический город не может быть не зеленым. В чем разница между ними, или это просто стадии роста и развития города? Спасибо. Um, these are just kind of buzzwords, and uh, um, so um, these words, small cities. Eco cities and green cities are used by different people in different meaning, <clears throat> and so there's no strict uh, structure among these words. And um, uh, smart cities are mainly uh, at, at the beginning. Smart city, the word smart city was used by American. People and um, uh, eco cities started being used in China, and green cities are mainly used by European people. But um, eco cities and green cities are main, uh, focusing on the environmental issues, and um, uh, smart cities in the United States are mainly used in uh, uh, network city or ICT driven city kind, and so. Um, these uh, words are not, none of the, uh, uh, these words are strictly uh, defined, so there's no, uh, you can use as you like. This, the, uh, these words are just like this, this kind of um, uh, words. And now, uh, in in the the global trend, so uh, you know uh, there is um, uh, in Europe there is a, a prize called Green Capital, and every each year one city is uh, selected, awarded. Uh, as green capital, uh, not all, uh, limited to capital city like London and Paris and Moscow, but um, uh, the, from the point of um, the uh, um, uh, environment friendliness, uh, one city is selected. So many different organizations select and award uh, this kind of um, cities. So uh, and also, uh, for example, the Rockefeller Foundation select 100 resilient cities, and the resilient cities are another uh, the uh, fashionable word uh, recently. Так, лучше на русском, конечно. Спасибо вам большое за лекцию, прежде всего. Послушав вашу лекцию, возник такой небольшой, довольно глупый, но практический вопрос. Дело в том, что я из Иркутска, и вы сейчас привели основную проблему российских городов. Это их монофункциональность. Но тот город, из которого родом я, 
он частично использует указанные вами технологии мультифункциональности или смешанного использования. Даже университет частично интегрирован с городом, территориально и в плане взаимодействия с правительством. Но, но мне кажется, что этот город далек от умного. И возникает вопрос, а какие можно выявить тенденции по реформации подобных городов в умные? Я не беру не только конкретно свой город, но и любой среднестатистический город в России. Но в частности, в Иркутске есть проблема плотная застройка. Несмотря на то, что новые здания, в них используется вот эта вот смешанная функциональность, нельзя сказать, что эти города умные. И меня данный вопрос сильно взволновал. Все же, как и каким образом можно перевести подобные города в умные? Спасибо. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the each city has different problems, and uh, so there's no one uh, answer or no, no one typical smart city. And so, um, in the case of Irkutsk, and if you have, um, you know, uh, the dense buildings and uh, the what the the problem is that um, the smart Uh, in my definition, the smart city is, uh, is the, the city which uh, identifies the problem and um, find the solution together with the people living there. So in the case of Irkutsk, and, um, uh, you have um, uh, dense buildings and, uh, and um, you and um, your people, uh, citizen of Irkutsk, uh, Uh, the, it depends on how your people find the, the, the problems and uh, uh, what is the core of the problem and uh, in which way uh, the, the problems should be solved. And uh, so uh, after you find, the, there should be uh, some discussion among the people and, and also the Uh, the local government, municipality, find the, the uh, problems. And, and uh, uh, so then if you can find some better way to uh, improve your problems and uh, together with the, your people, then um, it is a part of smart city. So uh, it is, you know, smart city is not just a goal of the, uh, its own, but um, uh, once you identify the problem, then find the way to solve or improve your situation better uh, together with the, uh, uh, your people, then uh, Irkutsk is a smart city. And uh, uh, I don't have an immediate answer to Uh, your question and uh, how to get to your uh, make the uh, make your city Irkutsk a smart city, but um, uh, it is um, your step to find the way together with your people. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, time is up, and uh, maybe one question. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you for the presentation, it was really great and, and I think um, uh, I just never thought that such a situation can be like that. But there is there's one thing, um, now we're in the era of uh, forced industry, yeah, when everything is electronic and uh, big data influences us. Um, but uh, all the startups which, are, which should solve our problems uh, uh, Can they really do that? Because I think the thing is that only big platforms, as you said, yeah, that should be everything controlled from water, electricity to big data, transportation, only big corporations can solve this problem. Maybe uh, from your point of view, maybe you know a case or you can say like, yes, there are some real big corporations in like today, which are solving such problems. And maybe you can like tell some examples of it, how it is done. 
and what companies uh, maybe in Japan or USA um, like solving such problems, like creating these platforms uh, and implementing them uh, into the cities? Um, actually, um, the, uh, uh, the platform uh, is uh, becoming uh, very important, but, and uh, the, there will be uh, platformers. And, but um, uh, in, in uh, uh, actually, uh, the, the platform itself is not necessary for each city, and uh, so the big company is not required to provide platforms platform for each city and um, uh, it, it can be um, organized in the, in the cloud and um, uh, the, the small application, individual applications on the... Uh, uh, Excuse me, I have one remark. For example, you have a hospital yeah, yeah? Uh, and uh, you want to one solution. So one company gives you one solution. For example, um, it it can reconstruct everything. Uh, it can implement a system that can, ha which has the um, the card of the patient. Yeah, and everything is done in the system. But uh, this system complies uh, with some like diagnosis systems that is provided by other companies. And for example, I as a um, one company which is doing, which is creating this platform can go, for example, to Siemens and say, I know that you're making this system, but uh, I'm going to buy it because I'm implementing it into the platform. So I'm talking from this point of view. So I can collaborate with big companies, but I'm as an integrator, one, one integrator, for example, eh? because if this doesn't happen, it means that I have to talk with a lot of uh, bunch of people, for example, a lot, a lot of bunch of companies. And this is, for me, I think is a big problem because I want one solution to be integrated. So I'm talking from this point. If they like a practice that, like, for example, General Electric does it, or maybe Hitachi, that you worked in Hitachi, for example, yeah? So maybe what big companies can do that? Um, actually, um, the... Um, uh, in the I, um, uh, industry 4.0 and the IoT area, the, the, uh, the communication in interface will be uh, is being uh, standardized, and so uh, the um, in the case of um, uh, the uh, plat uh, hospital, then the, the platform base platform can be uh, purchased at, uh, from one company, but. Um, uh, the other applications can be um, uh, applied or uh, at attached uh, through the, the, um, the interface. Um, and um, so I think, you know, uh, there are a lot of space for um, startups to uh, work in the area and uh, uh, this would help uh, expand, you know, the uh, well, since I, I've been working in a large company like Hitachi, and so uh, I personally feel that a more um, open uh, system is necessary, and also uh, the, to uh, you utilize the, the capability of um, startups is very important for the, the future uh, prospect of the, say, hospital and or city. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again.